students welcome back to our class that is international business today uh, we are going to <coughs> complete a very important topic of this unit uh, that is nothing but the theories of international trade or international business so we are having almost four to five theories what are those we will learn and we will go for uh, this now international trade theory that means international trade is a branch of economic concern where the international transaction is many times that means the network firms are taking place in such a way that it should have to be taken place. Now, the international trade is the branch of economics concerned with the exchange of uh, goods and services with foreign countries. That means it is totally related with the economic concern. International transactions uh, in many net forms other than traditional traditional importing and exporting, international trade theory has proved to be too limited for explaining the current liabilities of to international business. Now, see so what happened, the importance of multinational cooperation and the globalization of production are now well recognized. Next, see in economics, the principles uh, of absolute advantage refers to the ability of a party or individual or a firm or country. See, this is the first theory, theory of absolute advantage. In this, what is happening? This theory is proposed by Adam Smith in 1776. Smith's theory is first to explain why unrestricted free trade is beneficial to a country. That means if two countries are uh, interchanging their goods, so there should be uh, transportation or the trade or the taxes should be free of cost so that it can be benefit to both the countries. This theory indicates that. So the theory of absolute advantage holds that by specializing in the production of goods, they can produce more efficiently than anyone else nation can increase their economic well-being. If you see here, now according to Smith, Adam Smith, who is regarded as the father of modern economics, countries should have produced goods in which they have an absolute advantage. Like an individual or business or country is said to have an absolute advantage if it can produce a good at a lower cost than another individual or business or country. For example, if Canada can produce 100 pounds of beef using two rankers, while Argentina needs three ranchers, to produce 100 pounds of beef. So Canada is an absolute advantage over Argentina in beef production. So the absolute advantage can be the result of the country's natural endowment. Now, uh, one more example, if I want to say, like assume that two nations are there, like North America, South America countries, or North Korea, South Korea. North and South are both able to produce two goods, clothes and grains. Assume Further, that labor is the only scale product of production and thus the only cost of production. In the north, the clothes are 10 and the grains are 20. In the south, it is the clothes are 20 and the grains are 10, vice versa. You should see here, like, units of the, this is the table if I take it here. Before this, I want to explain that the uh, country A and country B, south and north, they are importing. These are the exporting the goods and they are importing. These goods are exporting and they are importing. So, advantage in producing goods B. Comparatively, the goods are in the A. So, what is having the exchange rate is taking place. So what is needed here? The labor is there. So, if I am getting the same labor, for example, a country, A country labor is going to charge 20 rupees for that product and country B is charging 10 rupees for one product like cloth. Coming to the grains, if B country is charging 20 rupees and A country is charging 10 rupees, then we have to exchange the goods. A should have to produce only uh, grains and B should have to produce only clothes. So the rate of the uh, capital for the labor is 10 rupees. So the company can save or the organization can save 20 rupees per unit for, for labor. So this is a win win situation. This is known as uh, Story of that means uh, absolute advantage. Now, see here A1 labor 20 rupees for X commodities and 10 rupees for Y commodities. Here, the same B labor is charging 10 rupees for X and 
20 rupees per unit. If you exchange the rate, it will be like this. Now the goods A and goods B, it will be like this. Which one is there? The economist can be able to define. Now only that it is a good decision making for the organization which country should have to produce which goods. With the help of this, we can take the decision. Now, the theory of comparative advantage. The theory of uh, comparative advantage was first proposed by Ricardo and uh, his full name is David Ricardo and he has illustrated this comparative theory in 1817. So according to him, it makes sense for a country to specialize in the production of those goods that is produced most efficiently and to buy the goods that is produced less efficiently from other countries. That means uh, the nation should produce uh, those goods for which they have the greatest relative advantage. If countries do specialize this way, total world production will be greater. Now, if you see here, in this, the uh, current opportunity most means that no country has a comparative advantage, hence trade would not be beneficial. In this case, to get plus 5 of x into 10 to 15, what is happening from 10 minutes to 15 minutes, we need plus 5. Both countries must give up 2 units. If they are giving 2 plus 2 minus, what will happen? It will reach to that. Hence, the opportunity cost is identified as minus 0.4 units of y per 1 unit of x axis. See, in the x axis, this is x axis, this is y axis. Here we are taking the points 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Whereas here we are taking 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. If I show you another map, can you able to understand? See here, it is a clear picture. How to go? A company is producing the goods, how much it is costing, and the big country is producing the goods, how much it is costing. Next. Richard also explained the theory with the following assumptions that there is a free trade between two countries. There is no transport cost. Labor is homogeneous. Cost of production is expressed in terms of labor. Production is subject to constant returns to scales. All these things are. If I take an example of two countries, England and Portugal, where this is the unit of floor C and the unit of mine depth. Clear picture. This is the picture of 10 point zero ten twenty thirty. Uh, for 40, 50. Here it is taking like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. <coughs> England, which is like blue color, how much it is taking in the green color? Check how much it is taking. They are taking 15 units of wine and they are producing 18 units of clothes they are producing. Whereas, Portugal, they are producing 27 units of wine and 18 units of clothes. So, which one should have to prefer? We have to prefer to the Portugal country. Next. Next theory is Facto Endowment Theory. This theory is developed by Bertil Olin and Ellie Hexter. Facto Endowment Theory notes that countries will produce and export products that use large amount of production factors that they have in abundance and they will import products requiring large amount of factors that are scarce in their country. This theory, I mean the theory is also known as Sir Paulin theory. This theory is extending the concept of comparative advantage by bringing into consideration the environmental and cost of factors of production. Not only that, the theory also helps to explain why nations with relatively large labor forces such as China will concentrate on producing labor incentive goods in countries like Netherlands which has relatively more capital than labor will especially specialize in capital intensively goods. See here what is happening, which factor is good depending on that factor we have to produce like China is having more labor so they will prefer that means they are going to produce more goods with low cost whereas netherland is having more capital but they are having less labor so we, they can interchange the goods if the netherlands is investing the money in the capital of china uh, the capital what of the budget for china the china will produce those goods with low cost and will produce the goods in 
So that is called international business and changes taking place. Now, factor endowments consist of land, labor, capital, uh, natural resources, climate, etc. Next, factor endowment theory is a comparative advantage of technology and resource and endorsement demand. See, according to the situation, technology and conditions, you have to accept. What are the technologies good? What are the resources are good? What are the demand is there? They have to go with that. Now, this is the one simple one, workers. The workers are the exporting, the capital is also good. Then this is the Indian situation. The workers, that means import labors in the industry, where the workers are less high, and the capital is less than this equals. Here, if the capital is less and the work is also less, it is a negative situation. Now, next theory is Leon Thief Paradox. Leon Thief Paradox, that means an exception of the Hexer Oli theory, was ex examined by W.W. Leon Thief in 1950s. Okay. In 1950s, Leon Thief Leon found that. U.S. exports was less capital intensive at imports, although the presumption, according to the Hectorson, Excel Coding theory, have been that of capital rather than labor intensive export goods, because the proportion of capital investments at that time was higher than labor in the United States. See, Leonard Paradox is economics. He says that a country with a higher capital per worker has a lower capital labor ratio. In high capital countries have low capital ratio in exports than in imports. So this is totally uh, shocking for the scientist. And he inferred from this result that the US should adopt its competitive policy to match its economics relatively. In 1953, the tested empirical theory has been taken to international trade by using the input output analysis. So the Leon Thief paradox has come into the light and people started checking the surprise of the how far this undisputed hexa-Olin theory is. Now, you see here in this, mass and energy, how much it is taking, capital and labor, physical and maintenance resistors, maximum of trans for me, the transformable of C plus plus, capital plus labor. If you see here, it is totally it is explaining how much it is charging. For embedded minimum and the further mass minimum. This picture shows about the total of the thief paradox. Next. Yeah. Next one is international product life cycle. Already we did in our first sum product life cycle. Like I have four stages introduction, growth, maturity, decline. I can list us. Here also we are having the next term. That is the international product lab Here, uh, the country that means which country was producing which goods in that what state. The developed countries will start the goods at the introduction part, whereas the developing countries will start at the maturity level. And the uh, people in underdeveloping countries or the inventory countries will stop there. Or underdeveloped countries will not start at a time. This is the picture. And that means this theory is proposed by. Well, in 1966, which concerns the stages of production of the product, which are unknown, now, such as the product is first produced by parent country, then by its foreign subsidiaries, and finally, when the world war cost and the, that means anywhere in the world, where costs are the lowest one to magnify the following four stages that means the product life cycle, introduction, growth, maturity, decline. Next one is here we are having the Porter's theory of national competitive advantage Porter's. So here the portal diamond property referred to as the portal diamond theory of national advantage is a model that is designed to help and understand the competitive advantage that nation subgroup possess due to certain factors available to them. The government can also be catalyst and improve the country. So now, what is happening here? We are we are having four factors. That is factor and uh, that's the form, strategy, structure, and rivalry. Factor conditions and homemade conditions related and supporting industries. 
Now we'll go for the first one factor endowments or factor conditions. What is happening? Any country or the nation's positions in factors of production such as skilled labor, infrastructure, land, labor, capital, everything. And necessary to come uh, compete in a given industry. Now, demand conditions. How much is the homemade demand condition? So the nature of the homemade demand for the industry products or services, they, how it is. Next one is relating and supporting industry. So in the relating and uh, supporting industry, the presence or the absence in a nation of supplier industries and related industries that, uh, that means that are internationally competitive. And the last one is form strategy, structure and environment. So what is happening? The condition in the nations governing how companies are created, organized and managed and the nature domestic rivalry is taking place between the competition. So this is the structure of the theories of the international trade and business for the class. Just have a look here on the screen. Once again, I want to show some important things that how it is working. So, first thing is every theory is into first one is uh, we are having five theories here. The first one is uh, the theory of absolute advantage, second one, theory of comparative advantage, third one is factor endowment theory, fourth one is Leon T paradox theory, fifth one international product life cycle theory, and the last one is total diamond theory. A protest is also known as advantage protocol by These are the concerns where the topics are taking place, and you have to refer to the Google also or YouTube for uh, getting more additional knowledge in of these terms for your future endeavor. And it is going to they can ask anyone theory, you should have to prepare it and you have to write for it. So I hope students understand the concept and please uh, mention your role in the comment box for your attendance. Thank you. Have a nice day.